Hi, I am Dr. Vidushi from Suvi Eye Hospital, Kota. And in this talk, we discuss the current treatment options that are available for managing a patient of dry eye syndrome. Now, before we jump to pharmacological agents or eye drops that are used for the treatment of dry eye, we must remember a few lifestyle modification kind of things which help in the management of dry eye. The first is that there must be protection from dry wind, direct sunlight and toxic and industrial fumes and smokes from coming into contact with the eyes. Cigarette smoke is also considered to be a positive irritant which may increase the symptoms of dry eyes and any ophthalmologist seeing a patient of dry eye must always look for localized lid, conjunctival and corneal abnormalities as these may be coexistent with a dry eye patient and may further aggravate the symptoms of dry eyes. The photograph here shows uh, goggles which can be used as a moist chamber goggles and although these kind of goggles uh, are used in severe dry eyes, any simpler looking version or a normal looking goggles can also be used with large frames for protection from exposure to direct wind and sunlight. We must also avoid any environmental stresses that contribute to drying up the eyes further. For example, environments with low humidity and direct air conditioner drafts coming onto the face should be avoided. We should also minimize the visual strain that can increase the symptoms of dry eye, especially in computer users or those who are using any kind of visual display units. And when using the computers, follow a few tips like lowering the computer display to decrease the interpalpebral aperture and also taking periodic breaks where the eye can be closed intermittently to relieve some of the symptoms of dry eyes. And the patients must also remember that there are many drugs that can further increase dry eye, particularly anticholinergic drugs, etc. So as far as possible, minimize the use of excessive drug therapy in these patients. Now, according to the clinical category, uh, according to the latest classifications of dry eye, dry eye has been classified as aqueous deficiency dry eye or over evaporation dry eye. Now, whether it is tear deficiency or aqueous deficiency or over evaporation, evaporative kind of a dry eye, the management uh, obviously overlaps as it is difficult clinically to distinguish these two subsets. But largely, we must maintain the moisture in the eyes, reduce the evaporation of tears, increase secretion further, and also control the inflammation and immunoreaction, which according to the new understanding of the pathogenesis of dry eye symptoms is always present. And at the same time, we must also treat any associated meibomian gland dysfunction, which is very commonly seen, clean the eyelids regularly, and replace the artificial tears. According to the severity of the symptoms, if there are intermittent symptoms, artificial tears will add volume to the tear film and relieve the symptoms in mild cases. For mid-severity dry eye, artificial tears can be used along with punctal occlusion. And for severe dry eye, we often have to resort to some kind of surgery, though there aren't very successful surgeries for dry eye. But uh, cases with Stephen Johnson syndrome, etc., where there is conjunctival keratinization and all, uh, as a desperate attempt, parotid duct transplant may be tried and new immunosuppressive agents may help. And of course, mebomitis must always be treated because it is often coexistent with dry eye and uh, the standard management should be explained to the patient so that they can follow it at home. Now, when it comes to the pharmacological management, uh, the by far the uh, mainstay of therapy in dry eye conditions is to use tear supplements. However, the preservatives in tear supplements can cause toxicity, especially because they are used for such a long time. And therefore, single-use applicaps have been made and transiently preserved tear supplements are also available. Then there are ointments which are used for dry eye. These are usually petrolatum based. They prevent dry eyes, but if they dry up, they can also act as a foreign body. And there are newer things which are being tried like polymer inserts, autologous serum, Punctual occlusion is of course an established therapy and essential fatty acids given orally can sometimes help in these dry eye patients. So tear supplements if they are non-preserved and are not specially formulated molecules get contaminated and therefore preservatives have to be used but they cause their own to can cause their toxic symptoms. 
Transiently preserved eye drops are also used and these eye, uh, tear supplements have a high adherence to ocular surface and if they are not very viscous they do not cause much blurring of vision. The commonly available tear supplements are hyaluronic acid, cellulose and methyl cellulose and their derivatives for example hydroxypropyl cellulose, hydroxyethyl cellulose, HPMC and CMC or carboxymethyl cellulose. Then polyvinyl alcohol where the optimum concentration is 1.4%. This is often used in combination with povidone. Glycerine can also be used and then propylene glycol and polyethylene glycol are also used as tear supplements. Now in all artificial tears, hydrogels are the active ingredients which are basically polymers which swell up in water and retain moisture. And mucoadhesive property in these artificial tears will increase their retention time in the eye giving a longer duration of action. And the viscosity is determined by the chain length as well as the concentration. And the more viscous the tears, the longer they will stay in the eyes, but they may also cause transient blurring when they are instilled into the eye. There is now a concept of using hypotonic tears because it has been established that hypertonicity of the tears in dry eye conditions also contributes to increasing inflammation and increasing symptoms of dry eyes. So it is thought that using hypotonic tears may take care of some of the symptoms. The international brands that are available in India are Refresh Tears, which is basically 0.5% CMC with Purite, which is a preservative that breaks down, or Refresh Liquid Gel, which is 1% CMC and is therefore more viscous. Sustain, which is polyethylene glycol and propylene glycol with HP Guar, which is uh, thought to form a mucoadhesive matrix on the cornea. And Blink Tears, which has polyethylene glycol with hyaluronic acid. Tears Natural, which is HPMC, and Gentile, which is also HPMC. Now the cellulose esters, CMC, is one of the most commonly used tear supplement that is used in India. These are viscoelastic polysaccharides. They increase the viscosity of tears. And as the concentration is increased, the viscosity also increased a lot. However, there is a limit to how much the uh, concentration can be increased. And the more viscous the drops, the more they will cause some degree of transient blurring. Polyvinyl alcohol is a low viscosity tear supplement. It causes optimal wetting of the cornea at a concentration of 1.4%. It is often used in combination with povidone. Then there are carbomers which are not available in India. Glycerine is another uh, drop that is used as a tear supplement. And it is supposed to be uh, protective against the hypotonic stress that takes place in dry eyes. Now because the um, tears are hypotonic in dry eye conditions, it is thought that they cause uh, some degree of inflammation and release of inflammatory mediators from the cells and glycerine and other such molecules uh, help in protection against this stress because they enter into the cell uh, cells. Then hyaluronic acid and autologous tears have also been tried. Hyaluronic acid is not easily available. There is a drop called Hyalolesop which is uh, imported from Germany and it gives good results but not freely available and autologous tears uh, have also or autologous serum has also been used as artificial tears. So how to choose the right uh, tear supplement? Now there is not much difference between the different molecules per se but there are other factors that need to be taken into consideration for example Higher viscosity will help in retaining the tear supplement for a longer time. Yet we must remember that it should not cause too much blurring on installation. Also added electrolytes etc. If they are similar to natural tears, they help in maintaining the ocular health. And the most important thing is also to look for the preservative in these eye drops. Now the available CMC based eye drops are basically Optive, Refresh Tears and Refresh Liquid Gel. Uh, Optive has CMC 0.5% but it also has compatible solutes like glycerin etc which protect against hyper or smaller uh, damage to the cells. Refresh Tears is 0.5% CMC whereas Refresh Liquid Gel is 1% CMC. Now polyethylene glycol based tears are Sustain and Sustain Ultra also Blink Tears. The Sustain has uh, polyethylene glycol and propylene glycol but it also has HP Goar which forms mucoadhesive matrix over the cornea and therefore may help in conditions where there is damp some degree of damage to the mucus mucin layer on in the tear film 
and sustain ultra is not uh, also uh, has the polyethylene gly glycol as well as propylene glycol and it is thought to cause less blurring of vision and it also has hp goar and hp goar forms a very tight viscoelastic gel that covers the damaged corneal cells and helps in healing blink tears is a combination of polyethylene glycol with sodium chloride which is the preservative and also has hyaluronic acid the hpmc based artificial tears are tear, tears natural and gentil which uh, have both hpmc there are also uh, there is also a concept of oil containing eye drops which may help in the conditions where there is problem with the lipid layer of tear film and hypothetically may prevent evaporation of tears and although these are not available in india but refresh and dura and soothe emollient eye drops are a uh, uh, are based on this concept now when it comes to the preservative it is very important to consider the preservative that is used in tear supplements some of the transiently preserved uh, tears have a uh, preservative sodium perborate or purite uh, gentil for example has sodium perborate and the uh, refreshed tears has purite then the non preserved tears which have no preservative are uh, cellufresh and cellovis which are not available here but also uh, tears natural etc but most of these are not available in india then the uh, different eye drops have uh, different preservatives for example tears natural has a polyquad and uh, sustain has again polyquad but the important thing to remember is that benzalkonium chloride or bsc is one of the most toxic preservatives that is used in eye drops and should be avoided in patients who are receiving dry eye therapy for a long duration of time so the ideal tear substitute should provide physical and pharmacological activities uh, to relieve the symptoms of dry eyes so it should be comfortable in the eye it should help in water retention it should have a delayed tear breakup time uh, or, or rather it should delay the tear breakup time which is significantly reduced in dry eyes and it should have a prolonged residence time in the eyes and should also promote wound healing plus there is a concept now that if the tear supplements are hypotonic that is in the range of 150 to 170 ml or smalls per liter they may help in the uh, damage that is caused by hypotonic tears but this is not widely caught on the ph should be very neutral 7.2 to 7.4 is the ideal ph so the buffering mechanism of the tear supplements is important it should be high viscosity yet avoid any blurring or installation ideally it should be a non preservative tear or if the preservative is used it should be very least damaging to the cornea and should also have a reasonable price now emollients have a base of lanolin or petrolatum etc they usually do not have any preservatives and they are used for conditions where there is severe dry eye or exposure keratopathy for night time use so that there the eye is protected by these emollients uh, people have also tried slow release inserts for example lacrisert which is a rod containing 5 mg of hpmc it imbibes the water and then uh, keeps releasing some tears and the effect may last for 14 to 24 hours but again they have not become widely popular cyclosporine has now been used in dry eyes but the results are inconclusive uh, some patients may benefit but not everybody benefits the effect takes a long time and there some patients may have burning and stinging on installation of these drops uh, cyclosporine in some studies significantly improved the signs and symptoms of dry eye there may be patients who have more component of inflammation in their symptoms and it also decreases the expression of inflammatory markers which are important in the causation of dry eye symptoms and we must not forget that we need a healthy diet also which can avoid the dry eye symptoms including uh, antioxidants nutrients minerals etc so take as healthy a diet as possible so to conclude there are minor differences between the different molecules that are available as tear supplements but along with the molecule we must also consider other factors like the preservative used the viscosity of the eye drop and that it should not cause blurring on installation as well as the ph the electrolyte contents etc the buffering mechanism which all play a role in choosing the ideal substitute also we must take care of the associated inflammation as it is now increasingly recognized 
that all dry eye patients have some degree of inflammation which is responsible for the symptomatology and this needs to be taken care of. Newer therapies are being tried like autologous serum but they have not yet become widely accepted and with the treatment of dry eye, patients not only feel more comfortable but also see better and this is particularly important after intraocular surgery like cataract etc. and especially with the use of premium eye oils like multifocal eye oils where treatment of dry eye is also important in the post-operative period. Thank you.